Hi there guys, thanks for joining me on episode 8 of my video log which is basically a video diary of everything I did over the last week or so in gaming, in hobby related items like painting and conventions and things like that so uh, as some of you may have noticed I didn't do one last week uh, because uh, we had, I didn't actually have a lot going on last week in terms of gaming and, and hobby related stuff as uh, the weekend before I went with my family into London and we went to the science museums and did a couple of cultural things, which was really cool. Really interesting time museum. I really enjoyed seeing some of the you know, the, the scientific technologies from sort of 1965 all the way up to 2000. That was pretty cool seeing all the, the old technology that I grew up with and things like that. So that was a good time. Um, I did do a little bit of gaming, but what I thought I would do is combine them into this week's um, sort of video update. Uh, so it might be a little longer than normal, but hey, let's go for it. So first up, um, I got together with my regular Wednesday group uh, where we play our Risk Legacy campaign. Um, the games are getting a little longer now because obviously we've reached to the point where most of the things are unlocked through the you know the little pouches and things like that, and uh, the games are taking a little bit longer now because obviously we've got more things to fight over and a little more complicated rules and things like that. Uh, but this was this was the the last game that we played, which was game ten, um, which opened up the last few packets. So the aliens came to town, and uh, you know, Alien Island was founded, which we connected up um, into Australia and South America, uh, which is quite interesting because already there was a few issues with Australia about having having to get through onto the Asian continent through that big nuclear fallout zone. Um, so now obviously this is another way out, but also another way in. Uh, so the person who normally goes in Australia doesn't just sit there and hide away. Uh, it was a really fun game. Uh, we went back and forth as usual. And uh, in the end, Phil, I think it was Phil, won game 8 or game 10. So we didn't have a lot of time left after. So one of the, one of the guys had to leave. So we played, I taught them how to play Machi Koro. And I think that went down pretty well. Uh, but Two of the guys, uh, Kelty and Dave, were really going heavy on the on the red and purple buildings, and uh, I decided I wanted to go completely against the grain and not get any of the red and purple buildings. I just went blue, uh, which I I tend to find is quite a good way of going, and uh, I pulled out the win right at the end. So that was all the game I did that week. Um, then obviously, we were, like I said, we went the weekend, we went away. Uh, then the following week, I met up with the guys again. Um, unfortunately, this time, one of the guys, Phil, couldn't make it. Um, so, we just did a normal gaming night. And I taught them how to play Conquest of Planet Earth from Firing Frog Games. I like Conquest of Planet Earth. It's a very simple, um, not too difficult game. Uh, in terms of where you can either play co-op or um, against each other. Because we've been playing Risk, I kind of figured they might like the idea of, you know, carrying on with a sort of an aggressive um version of games against each other uh, but they opted to go for the the um co-op version so we played a four player co-op of that and it was really really easy i must admit it was the easiest game i've played of this in a long long time i know there's other ways you can make it more difficult and stuff but i mean geez we we smashed through this in no time uh, i played the little beetle men uh, i don't have the expansion for this so if i get a few more plays i might actually look to invest into the expansion uh, but after that, we played Dragon Flame from Minion Games. Uh, this is a, game, a little game I picked up, just because I like this sort of uh, sort of natured game. It's a quick, easy sort of uh, multiplayer game where you can just get people who don't often game, maybe involved in gaming. And uh, this went down pretty well. All of these guys liked it, and uh, it it was it was an interesting game as well. I remember. They, the guys thinking I was doing really badly because I had a load of knights and I had different treasure chests which were obviously cancelling each other out. Uh, but in the end I did really well in the village as well and I, I did score some big points on various little cards as well. So I pulled out the win there as well. Um, which was a really fun night. Really enjoyed that and the guys are looking forward to playing some more games that I bring around. Um, then on the Saturday uh, we had, obviously this was Easter weekend. So a lot of gaming was happening throughout the weekend and a couple of games we also played with some of the kids. Uh, well, but one of the things that we tried out just for the fun of it was Animal, animal Upon Animal from Haber Games. And um, 
it's a really fun, simple little game. I got a similar sort of game called Zuwabu, which I play with my kids. So this was a nice one to show the kids as well. We showed Alex how to play this. And then we played a few more, the kids played a few more games of this on the Sunday as well, or the Monday probably. Um, while reading one of the rules for something, me and Dee had a couple of games of WW Superstar Showdown. Uh, we played a one-on-one -on -one game where um, I was Big Show and he was Big E. And he absolutely smashed me. It was a proper beating. Uh, then we tried to do a tag. Then we did a tag team match where I played Big Show and Ronan Reigns, and he had um, John Cena and Daniel Bryan. And then I of course uh, turned the tables on him and laid the smackdown on his characters. I beat them both without even having to use my Big Show. So that was fun. It was sort of a fun light game. I really like WWE. Yeah, I played. You know, as soon as there's a chance to get a game in, we might as well jump in with a bit of Superstar Showdown because it's it's fun, it's quick, it's easy. Uh, but then once James arrived, um, we started playing some of the other games. Uh, one of the games we played was Cthulhu Realms uh, from Tasty, Tasty Minstrel Games. Uh, this was interesting. First time I played this, um, obviously I've, it's supposed to be similar to Star Realms, but I've not played Star Realms either. Uh, but one thing I did like, uh, and this was a four-player game, and uh, the way that, uh, as you can see this picture here, the way it's shown, you can you have like this cross with cards in it, and that dictates what you can buy. So you can only, if you're sitting on, like say, as this picture shows where I'm sitting on the bottom right, I can only buy cards from the row in front of me and the row to the left of me. And Martin, who was sitting to the left of me, he can only buy cards from the right and the front of him. So we basically share a row of cards, and I shared a row of cards with James. So... That was really interesting. I've not played a deck builder like that before. Um, and it creates interesting situations where you're only really looking at the two column of cards that are adjacent to you and what those people are doing. Although you can attack anyone in the in the game, which I think would have been more interesting if you could only attack to the left or right. That would have been interesting as well. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was a fine game. I didn't mind it. Um... Interesting theme, obviously, the Cthulhu theme, nice looking cards and stuff. Yeah, it was good. It was a good fun game. I liked it. Um, so, then I played another first play game um, of Automobiles from AEG. I love bag building games. I don't know what it is about bag building games. But, uh, I mean, I love King's Pouch. I love Hyperborea. I love Orleans. So, I knew I was kind of going to go into this game liking this game anyway. And it was actually really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, interesting you got quite a bit of replayability in the way the cards come out. So you can, what cards you, or what cubes you're going to buy to add into your bag. Um, and the way you travel around the circuit. And I think there's different circuits as well. So this is actually really good. I really enjoyed this. Um, I I think uh, D won this and I came second. I started in fourth position and I came second. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, it was good. Really enjoyed that. Uh, then after that, we did a video of Colosseum. Um, which is from Days of Wonder, or at least the copy we were playing from Days of Wonder, because obviously they have a, a copy on Kickstarter at the moment from Tasty Minstrel Games. And I, did, I enjoyed Gossip Coliseum a lot, quite a lot. Uh, we did the video of this, so we'll obviously talk a bit more about that on the Gaming Nights channel. Uh, but suffice to say, it was a fun little game. Uh, so that was the end of our Saturday night. Then the Sunday in the morning, I played a couple of games with my oldest son, Alex. We played Tomahawk from Matagot little two-player Indian control uh, area control game nice little fun two-player game uh, we enjoyed that I think yeah I won this quite convincingly as Alex played a couple of cards they'd work really in my favor because um, it's a little bit of a bluffing game you're trying to outthink of what your opponent is when you're playing Indians down into the territories and uh, that was really fun you really enjoyed that and then soon after that we played province um, I can't remember who makes province but it, it's just a little two-player game again. Um, the, the game came in a little jiffy bag because it's so small. I think they just redid a new issue of this or a new edition of this with upgraded components and stuff. But I mean, I paid something like three pounds for this game, so I was I'm not disappointed. And um, I won this one, um, which was interesting. And uh, I think I won. No, no, uh, Alex won this. He, he beat me quite convincingly in this, now that I remember looking at the pictures. Um, and then later on that night, a couple of friends about Danny and Bennett came over. Uh, we played a big six-player game of Rise of Augustus with the kids and Danny and Bennett. 
Um, and that went down pretty well. I think Alex absolutely smashed us in this. Uh, but then the boys went to go watch TV. And we, us and the, me and Carla and the Bennetts played Dogs of War. Oh, no, with Alex, Alex as well. Uh, Nathan went to go watch TV. Uh, we, so we played a five-player game of this. I took out the Pink Lady because... I don't know if you guys know much about Dogs of War, it's from Cool Mini or not. Uh, I, I've played it a few times and I find the pink lady, I can't remember her name, it might be the pink lady, but it's the pink bust. Uh, she has the ability that when you share a space with someone in the battle order, you, she counts as basically having two there, so she kind of like wins all the ties and stuff. And uh, it's really, really annoying and I tend to find anyone who plays her doesn't get a benefit from that because it's more of a detriment because people rather tend to want to go against her rather than with her because you you have to spend double the resources to try and get the the bonuses so we decided to just leave her out of the game and choose from the many other characters i have because i've got the kickstarter version uh, and it was a good fun game i mean i know danny really enjoyed it and uh, she won as well uh, alex came second even though he fell asleep through the scoring um, but it was really good fun really nice game um, i think i definitely want to have a try with my wednesday group try to bring it around there and see how they like it as well um, and then, I think, what was this, Monday, Monday, when the, um, the other guys came around, um, we played, we had like a Easter, Easter celebration with a couple of other families, uh, once that settled in, um, we played Dino Dude Ranch, which is a game that Martin got from Kickstarter, um, from Leisure Games, isn't that Leisure Games, it's Lightman Games, Lightman Games. Uh, this is actually not a bad game. It's a really good family game. I mean, as a as a say a, a veteran gamer, um, you wouldn't get a lot out of this game. It's a nice, fun, easy, quick game. But for a family, like mean, my two boys, love the game, and uh, so much so that we've played it three times this weekend. And I'm more than willing to actually pick up a copy of myself to play with the family because they really enjoy it that much. Um, and we also played. What else did we play? We played uh, a couple of other games. We played Rhino Hero as well. I didn't take a lot of pictures of this on Monday because there was too much happening. But we played uh, Rhino Hero where you build a little card tower. Uh, we played another game of Animal Upon Animal. We played another game of Superstar Showdown. Uh, we played another game of Dino Dude Ranch. And I also played a game of Kings of War with my mate Bennett. Uh, so as you can see, it was jam-packed weekend of gaming. I mean, crikey. So many games that I, I was struggling to remember them all as I'm going through this video log. Uh, and to pick a game of the week, obviously, even over the two weeks, would be really, really difficult, I think. I mean, Automobiles was excellent. Um, what, what else? Uh, play Obviously, a couple of sort of filler games like Machikoro and Dino Dude Ranch and things like that. I think Dino Dude Ranch is high up on my list just because my boys liked it so much. Um, and Dogs of War was good as well, but I think Automobile would probably take my game of the week because I like the bag building. It was really interesting, nice and friendly, sort of, you know, it wasn't too difficult. So, yeah, I'll go with that. So, on to my painting side of things. Now, for painting nights, I had a couple of commissions I was working on, but then I got a, a sort of emergency kickstart uh, commission, if you like, uh, which was for Z War 1. The zombie game from Dice Sports. They needed some zombies painted for their um, convention season. So I had to drop everything and get those done quickly. Um, but I think they came out quite nice. Um, there's three different alternate zombies plus uh, a big boy zombie. And um, a couple of runner zombies. And uh, they... they, they were in, i tell you what, the, the, um, the big boy zombie... He was quite difficult to paint because he was really heavy. He was a metal model, and uh, he wouldn't stick to my my little cork or paint toppers that I keep the models on. So I had to hold him by hand, and uh, his arms obviously loose, uh, like separate as well. So I, I had to be very careful. I didn't drop him because if I did, he just smashed to pieces. So that that was interesting. Uh, just to break up the monotony of painting zombies all the time, I painted up a couple of bits of other pieces as well. Like I painted. One, one random greatsword from my uh, empire army, or now my kingdoms and men army. Uh, of course, always in painting Imperial Assault, so I painted up the two characters from the uh, the Boba Fett box, which I now can't think of what it's called. 
Um, they were for Chris, and then I also painted up some Shadows of Brimstone miniatures, I painted up some Hellbats, some Swamp Slugs, and um, the Slashers, and I painted up a couple of bits and other pieces that I was doing with Shadows of Brimstone, like the snakes and things, but they weren't completely done, so I didn't take any pictures of them. And I also painted up for um, Alan, I painted up the, another copy of Dexter and Alan, or Alan and Dexter from Ticket to Ride. I was saying by the time Salwin sent over his one, I never even heard I'd like heard of these things before. But now I painted up my second set. I really liked what I did on the dinosaur's chest with this one. Uh, it was I, I wanted to make it a little different to what I did for Salwin, uh, just so that I don't you know, just copy and paste everything over for everyone else. And then also, because he's one of my favorite heroes, and we're getting into that season now with all the superhero movies and things like that, I painted up the Flash. Obviously, I watched the TV show. Uh, we're going to go watch the Batman and Superman movie in 40X on the 9th of um, April. So, uh, I hear there's a cameo for the Flash in there. So, got to get him painted up. So, there you go. There's a picture of him. And there, I did some more bits and pieces, but I didn't finish anything off. So, that's why there's just the pictures of the things I finished off. Uh, but that was it for my painting stuff. And then... We shall can move on to a little bit of my thought of the week. Um, the thought of the week was obviously it was Easter, and we yeah, in England. I'm pretty sure it's most of the most in the world. You get like um, extra days off, so you got Good Friday and Easter Monday, and uh, so it's a nice long weekend. And obviously the kids go on school holiday, yeah, but us as well. So the kids are off for two weeks. Uh, so there is a lot going on during during this period. And uh, it was definitely the case, as we did a ton of gaming over the weekend. And I didn't even do all that much compared to some of the other guys that I know. I mean, uh, I um, I had to get that commission done for Z11, so I didn't do any gaming on the Thursday or Friday. And uh, just got my head down and got that commission done. But uh, Saturday and Sunday and Monday, the games were just rolling out. And I was wondering, how, what did you guys do over Easter? Did you guys do some gaming? If so, please comment below. I'd love to hear what you guys did. And uh, maybe even put up a video of your own of what you did over the Easter weekend. It's always good to share what you did in gaming. Hence the reason I do this little video log. So anyway, thanks for watching. And thanks for listening to me ramble on for almost 20 minutes about my gaming and hobbies. And see you next time.